Hey there, everyone. It's Camber here with YoPro In The Know podcast and video series. I'm here with Crystal Brockington, a consulting campus recruiting specialist at Deloitte in Atlanta, Georgia, 24 years old. And she has been connected to us today through one of our recent interviews with Monty Grace King. So uh, we actually, Crystal and I also went to Furman together. We overlapped there for a little bit. We're in the same major um, and so I'm really happy to reconnect with you today. So thanks so much for being here, Crystal. Yeah, thanks, Camber. Really excited to be here and talk to you a little bit more about a little bit about my journey, but just really excited to be part of this platform, which we kind of talked about a little bit before, but just excited to be part of this platform to connect young professionals. So loving everything awesome. about this and excited to talk. Cool. Well, thanks for being here. Um, let's get started with background. So where you're from, what you're currently doing, um, if you've had any other previous careers before what you're doing now, and then we'll dive into the details. Sure, so a little bit about me. So I'm Crystal Brockington. I'm based out in the Atlanta area. Guess you can kind of call Atlanta home. My dad was in the military, so he you know, had us living all over the world and he finally retired just outside of the Atlanta area. So Atlanta's home for me. Um, decided to go to Furman University out in Greenville, South Carolina, and after kind of testing out pretty much every single major that you could think of, <laughs> I finally found my passion in my heart um, in communication studies and politics and international affairs. So um, I kind of laugh at that story because I came in wanting to go into pre-med. I swore I was going to be a doctor. I knew med school was my path. Um, then I was like, nope, I want to be an attorney. Then I was like, nope, I want to be a broadcast journalist. And then now I <laughs> ended up, you know, where I'm at now, which we'll talk about mm -hmm. a little bit um, more in a second. But graduated in 2018. Um, from there, I had about a week to move back from Greenville, South Carolina to Atlanta, where I started working at Deloitte as a campus recruiter for um, Deloitte, which is a global professional services firm. So they offer services in accounting, um, your audit tax advisory, and then also consulting. So did that about a week after graduating from Furman. I've been there ever since. Um, within that time, I've transitioned to be a campus recruiter. Um, so now my primary responsibilities are recruiting undergraduate students um, from different universities here in the Southeast region. Primarily, I recruit now for HBCUs, so historically black colleges and universities. So really ties into my you know, passion for DNI and really building that pipeline um, for you know, race, gender, um, and different leadership roles in organizations. So that's great. Right. Thank you for thank you for that recap. Um, yeah. well, first off, the fact that you've been at Deloitte since you graduated and that was, you know, almost almost three years ago. Um, you know, that's pretty unusual these days. People don't, especially young professionals in their early part of their career, don't stay in the same role for long. I'm an example of that. I know many others who are an example of that. So what has made you stay? And obviously you've started working your way through the ranks. Yeah, that's a great question. So the thing for me that I've always kind of had this like passion for is just being able to like grow and to be able to like hone in on like my different passions and newfound talents that I, you know, discover as I, you know, progress. So one of the things about Deloitte that has really been so influential to me is that I've been able to really grow in areas that drive my passion. So when I came into the firm, I knew I had a passion for connecting with people. I had a passion for wanting um, to help undergraduate students to really find out what would be that next career step. But within that, I had a very strong passion for diversity and inclusion. And so through that, I've been able to work with a lot of different um, initiatives within the firm to kind of help drive those efforts. And I think because of that, I've really been able to kind of shape my career in the way that I've wanted it to. So outside of my day-to-day -day responsibilities, I also have an initiative that I'm helping to drive and helping to really, you know, increase the efforts within the firm. And so with that, it's kind of exciting, you know, every day to know that not only am I doing my day-to-day -day responsibilities, but I also have a group of champions within the firm and mentors within the firm that are connecting me to different people, that are connecting me to different opportunities to be able to grow and develop in areas outside of my day-to-day -day responsibilities. So I think yeah. because of that, you know, it's allowed me to not, um, get too comfortable in what I do. It's kind mm -hmm. of challenged me in a lot of ways. 
Um, and I think because of that, you know, that's what's really kept me to stay at the firm, which I've really appreciated. So that's great. And I think that for people listening and watching one thing that you might not know if you're working for a really small company or maybe you're still in college is that there are so many opportunities like that to get involved at mid to large size companies, okay. um, which is something very important to keep in mind as you, you know, make your way into the young professional workplace. Um, so I think that's great. And I really admire you for being able to get so involved so early on in your career. Um, so we might touch back on that in a little bit, but first, obviously you're in the recruiting space for colleges. And right now I think there's new media coverage every day on different universities from, you know, from the North, South, saying, you know, all right, we're going to start in September. I know some people who are going back to school this week and it's August uh, 10th. So yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. So tell, tell us about that. Walk us through what that looks like. And um, you know, if you even know the answer right now. Yeah. I mean, I think obviously with everything going on, there's so much that is changing and so much of us having to rethink how do we do like our typical day-to-day -day responsibilities and just think, you know, with campus recruiting, our primary thing that we're doing is building relationships with students on campus, helping them to be able to realize like, these are potential areas that you can go into within our firm. This could be a good fit for you. And a lot of that is relationship building. And so now when we're looking at campuses are pushing back, whether they're gonna be on campus in the fall or maybe just saying, you know, it's gonna be fully virtual, but maybe there's gonna be like some hybrid, you know, yeah. um, like way of being, you know, doing mm -hmm. hybrid is such a buzzword right now. I know exactly. <laughs> so, you know, for me as a campus recruiter, I'm really having to be like innovative and think of ways of how can I continue to build these relationships with students and still do my job effectively, but also making sure that students needs are being met. Right. Because, you know, we, I'm sure you can relate people are on zoom calls like every single day. And so if we're having, you know, a campus event and it's on Zoom, it's like, what can we do to make this a little bit more exciting? What can we do to like yeah. really engage students on a personal level to make it not feel like it's just, you know, an interview uh, type format. So it's been an interesting time. I've honestly been pretty excited about it because I, I see it as being a way for me to kind of step outside of my comfort zone and really think of the new way of recruiting. Um, and then on top of that, you're looking at the new generation of uh, students that are coming into the workforce. It's an evolving workforce. So it's like, what can we do now to like bridge the gap of all these generations to really, you know, meet in a virtual format? So mm -hmm. it's been interesting. We don't have, um, I don't think we'll ever have a concrete idea of how the, what the right way is supposed to be. But I think every day it's a learning experience. Um, really figure out how can we can build those relationships and continue to maintain them yeah i mean like we said hybrid right now is really the direction most places are going to um and really it doesn't matter what industry you're in you know i work full-time in nonprofit industry and that is i mean i'm in fundraising and i've had to you know my whole job is building relationships like you said yeah. and that's what a lot of businesses are based on. And so what do you do to make yourself stand out? Um, and so that's definitely a challenge. And it kind of segues nicely into my next question for you, which is what has been your biggest hardship since you graduated from school? Um, and what have you learned from that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's one of my favorites. Yeah. So I, I actually feel like my, my biggest hardship was actually getting into where I'm at now. Uh, <laughs> I am the type of person where I've always felt like I've had to have a plan. Like I came into Furman knowing I was going to do A, B, and C, and this was going to get me here. And this was the plan. This is how it was going to play out. And so I kind of touched on a little bit, um, kind of talking about, you know, my story, but I, all the way up to my senior year, actually thought I was going to go into broadcast journalism. Um, I thought I was going to tie in my communications and my politics and international affairs uh, mm -hmm. majors to go into, you know, political communication or mm -hmm. going into broadcasting, um, even to the point where I did a fellowship in New York, where I interned at MSNBC News and also interned 
um, with Discover Communications and really thought this was the path and the journey that I was going to go on. And then after that, I realized that that wasn't necessarily my passion. I didn't really see myself being there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really had to go back to the drawing board. And I think where a lot of seniors that are in college, you're in this place of like, what am I supposed to do? What is that mm -hmm. next step? And for me, I was also in that place. And it really took me a minute to step back and really think about what exactly was my passion and what can I do to live that out on a day-by-day -day basis. And so it took a lot of like applying to jobs. It took a lot of no's to come back. It took a lot of, you know, reaching out to people and maybe not getting some answered emails. It took a lot of really just looking at myself and seeing like what are some development areas that I can do to you know make myself a standout candidate and so through all of that I was able to build um, my passion and to really connect with my network and build my network to get me to where I am now so I wouldn't say like in my current career I haven't had a hardship and I'm thankful for that mm -hmm. um, but getting to where I'm at um, definitely took a lot of growth and a lot of, you know, learning about myself, what my passion was, and how can I apply that into my next step. Right. And that's, I mean, that's something so many people go through is when they're in college, they think they're going to go one direction, and then it's the complete opposite direction. Um, I think there's a lot of, you know, connections and overlap between the field that you we're going into and what you're going into now. I mean, at the end of the day, everything is relationship based. Um, doesn't matter if you're in engineering, marketing, or reporting, it doesn't matter. It's all, you know, about connections. Um, so I think that's really applicable to a lot of different people. Um, so I'm mindful of time. So I do want to start wrapping things up with a few last questions. Um, I want to go back to talking about DNI. Um, what do you think is the young professionals who make up you know, two generations really. Young professionals right now are 21 to 39 years old. So that's the millennials and the Gen Zers. Um, what is our responsibility when it comes to DNI? Yeah, that's a great question. It's a loaded question. I know it <laughs> is. I know we don't have much more time, but this is, exactly. you know, this is your area. And so I really want to, I want to talk about it since uh, we have an expert in the house. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the biggest thing when it comes to um, diversity and inclusion and what I'm seeing a lot of organizations doing now, which I think is great, is there's a lot, it's like DNI and is the buzzword now. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of organizations are wanting to find the best ways of recruiting the best talent and what are, you know, different strategies that we can do? What are different trainings that we can do? Mm -hmm. And I think all of this is great. All of this is, you know, definitely helps in those areas. However, a lot of things that we're not seeing is like long-term initiatives that are being placed within organizations to really drive these efforts. Um, you know, for me, you know, recruiting at primarily HBCUs, you know, one of the things that I'm really focusing on is like, what are the retention efforts that are being made? What are some of those community building programs that we have within our organization that one can lead to a pipeline of leadership how are we you know, developing our next generation of leaders? How are we developing and making sure that our um, URM, so underrepresented minorities, are fully prepared for performance evaluations? Are they feeling comfortable on their teams and with their managers to be able to have open, authentic, real transparent conversations with their managers to be able to develop in a way that will set them up for success? So there's so many different areas. There's so many different ways that we can really, um, you know, improve our DNI efforts within organizations. But I think the biggest thing that we really have to look at is there's so much uh, knowledge that this new generation of the workforce is coming in with, and you know, we're also looking at some of our older generation that are still within, you know, our these firms, and how can we bridge that learning gap between them. And so once we kind of start realizing that there's wealth of knowledge that can be used, there's wealth of knowledge that can be shared, but also finding ways to continue to build community, to build long withstanding initiatives that will help to bridge that gap, um, then I think we've made efforts. I have to say, you know, organizations are doing what they can. A lot needs to be done, but I think we are taking a step in the right direction of 
understanding our um, downfalls and understanding our gaps, but really just being able to have an open ear to understand ways that we can continue to improve those efforts. Absolutely. Well, I think if people want to continue the conversation, I think, you know, we'll make sure that we share your LinkedIn with everyone, which you've given, you've given us permission to do. So we'll definitely link your account there. Um, any last minute words of advice before we wrap things up, Crystal? Oh, that's a great question. So last words of advice. Um, I feel like one of the biggest things that when I connect to a lot of people that are kind of trying to figure out their next step is really just taking advantage of uh, being comfortable in uncomfortable situations. I think right now is a prime opportunity where all of us are uncomfortable and all of us really don't know what that next step is going to be. Um, one of the things that I've had to uh, really hone in on is being genuinely curious and being comfortable with reaching out to somebody that might not seem as accessible just to get advice or just to kind of see what their story and what their path was. Um, within my career at Deloitte, that's where I found myself being able to get involved in a lot of different initiatives, being able to say like, hey, I know this might be a little awkward. I know you might be X, Y, Z level, or um, I know you might have a busy schedule, but just wanted to see if you have the opportunity to tell me a little bit more about what you do. What are some lessons that I can learn to kind of help um, me develop in these areas? So be comfortable with the uncomfortable. Uh, be comfortable with putting yourself out there. Um, be genuinely curious and find ways that you can learn and continue to grow day by day. I think those are some great pieces of advice to end on. So thank you again, Crystal, for your time today. We really appreciate it. And I look forward to staying connected. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Camber.